Hi guys, Niall here and welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today we're going to talk about how you can create a unique structural concrete beam in Revit. This is not necessarily just for concrete beams, uh, this can be used for any variant of beam that isn't standardised in your Revit family pack or that's not something that's readily available from a manufacturer or subcontractor download. The idea is that, particularly in concrete based modelling, we often have profiles for the beams that are not standardised in our Revit uh, installation information or not readily available online and the idea is to quickly show you how you can go into the standard Revit beam family and edit it so that you can get any variant. As you can see on screen I have a T beam, an inverted T and a beam with a duct and in this instance I'm going to very quickly show you how you can convert how you can convert the standard Revit beam family profile to account for this inverted T as well as give you the flexibility within the project to edit this freely and create duplicates and stretch the, the parameters of this with ease. So as you can see behind, I've already undertaken this exercise once to make sure that I'm not going to mess it up as I'm doing the, uh, the presentation in this video. And the idea is that we want to get create a family from the standard family that we can flex everything that we need to with ease. So as you can see on my width here, I can press 300 the center line remains consistent and the whole thing flexes to grow in, in the, um, the X axis. So this is the goal. So to begin, I'm going to shut out of this model. Apologies. And here's our base model um, that we're going to load our beams that we create into so we can show how it flexes, okay? So the first thing to do is go into your new under the file and go to family and under your standard template file, be it US metric, English, uh, English metric, US imperial, depends on where you're from. Scroll down and find your structural framing beams and braces model. Okay? And then you can open this family. As you can see, you already have parameters that show the, the length and the set out of the beam. Uh, I wouldn't recommend changing any of this as you see it. The reason why this is functional is because as you draw the beam in the model, it will essentially recognize this to this as your start to end point in the beam as you draft, and it'll extend over that um, that distance. So ideally, we don't want to change anything in the plan view, but what we want to do is edit the profile so that we can mimic our inverted T as we have it here. So we're going to go to our left view. And as you can see, we have our standard rectangular shape for the profile. When we select that, we can go to edit extrusion and you'll see that we actually already have reference planes in place that our geometry is appended to. So the first thing we want to do is draft out the rudimentary shape of the inverted T. So I'm going to remove all right, the first thing I'll do is I'm going to place lines, okay? And we are going to offset our first line, a nominal 50 mil. We're going to draft down 50, and we're just going to close. And then I'm going to select those two items, and I'm going to mirror them across the central axis, okay? Then I'm going to use the trim command, and I'm going to trim each of these. You might get a warning here. Yep, that's okay. Don't worry about that warning for the moment, and you'll get... What I'm going to do is these are assigned to the reference planes in all directions and this was telling me that this line was too short but what I was actually doing was disconnecting from a reference plane and causing an issue so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it and then I'm just going to draw above where I want this closing line to be I'm going to use AL to align I'm going to select the reference plane that I wanted to attach to and I'm going to select the line and then I'm going to lock it and that means that when with when this reference plane line when this reference plane apologies flexes this location will flex as well. So here we have the rudimentary shape, but as you can tell, we don't actually have anything to dictate the depth or the width of these notches that are cut out of the inverted T. We also have no parameters that dictate the overall height and the overall width of the concrete beam as it stands. So what we're going to want to do in this instance is we're going to use DI for our dimension, and we're going to select the reference plane, and we are going to select the line that we want to be the inside face of our notch, essentially. 
this scale isn't working currently at the view as, as we presented, so I'm going to change that to 1 to 10 just to make it a little bit more presentable. I'm going to use DI again, and I'm going to dimension the depth of the notch. And I'm going to do it on the reverse side as well. So what we've done is we've dimensioned out the notch size on either side of the beam. But what we haven't actually done is assign a parameter that's going to tell the beam to flex within the project environment once we load the family in. So as I select this, you will go up to the top toolbar and you'll see that we have a label here and we have none assigned to the label, but we can go down and there's already an existing parameter here, but what we want to do is add a parameter. And here we're simply going to call it notch depth and press OK. And that's a type parameter, if you noticed. And here, yet again, we're going to go to our label, drop down, add parameter, and we're going to call it notch width. Yet again, it's a type parameter, and it's set as a dimension parameter because we are assigning it to the dimension. We're going to press OK. So we've created now the two parameters that are going to dictate the size and shape of this notch. Okay. Now, on the reverse side, we all we need to do is select the associated notch parameter that we've assigned. So here, in this instance, we want to select notch width. And in the vertical, we want to select notch depth. Now, the sensible thing to do in your family environment before you save your family and load it into the project itself, you want to actually flex these parameters. So I'm going to select the parameter itself. And then when I click on the, the dimension, it'll bring up 50 and I'm going to press 65. And as you can see, it is appropriately flexing the shape of the profile for the extrusion. Similarly, when we select the notch width, I'm going to select that and I'm going to push that to 70. And as you can see, it is flexing as we want it to. So 70 is a bit narrow there. I'm going to set that back to 50. And in this instance, I'm actually going to set that to 80. Now, so we have assigned the parameters that are going to dictate the notch for the inverted T. But what we haven't actually done yet is assign the overall height and width parameters for the concrete beam. So as you can see, we have the origin line going through the center of the beam, and we've maintained that. But there's no need to change that in this instance. We also have a center line going down through the center of the beam. And both of these reference planes are how we're going to tell this beam profile to remain centered. And the way we tell it to remain centered on this point so that the midpoint is always the intersection is we're going to use our dimensions. By using pressing TI, we're going to select our outside reference plane, and then our center reference plane, and then the other outside reference plane. And then we're going to select the EQ above. And what that tells it basically is that at all times, if one side reference plane is to change, the other one has to remain equal to that relative to the center line. Similarly, I'm going to select the center, then the top and the bottom reference planes. And when we're finished with that dimensioning, I'm going to select the EQ to tell us yet again that if we say the overall height of this has to change, that it remains equidistant on both sides of the center line. Now we're going to add in the parameters that are going to dictate the width and the height of the overall inverted T-beam. So selecting the top reference plane, going down to the bottom reference plane, you can see that currently it's 300. Similarly, the left reference plane and the right reference plane, and you'll see that that's 200. Now, as we did before, we select the dimension itself and under label, we select add parameter. And here we call the parameter beam, uh, I'm going to call it beam depth in this instance. Okay. Yet again, it's a type parameter and it's grouped under dimensions automatically because we're assigning it to the dimension. And similarly, we select the width and we're going to add parameter and we're going to call this beam width. And as we did before, we are going to flex both of these ensure that they're behaving the way they should. And once we can confirm 
that these are behaving the way they should, we know that the integrity of the parameters is maintained and we can load it into our project family and have the flexibility that we want. So I'm just going to undo the two flexes that I made there and I'm going to finish that profile. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the 3D space and I'm going to go to File, Save as Family. And as you can see, I have an inverted T beam here already from the previous example I showed at the start of the video. So I'm just going to call this A and press save. Now I'm going to load into the project. As you can see, uh, we have the inverted T beam selected um, automatically because we loaded it in. But if it didn't automatically select it as we load in, if you press BM, it will bring up the beam, beam dialog. Failing that, go to your structure tab and select beam. Now in this instance, I'm going to use the on grid lines and I'm going to click and drag over the grids that I want to place it on. And as you can see, it automatically generates it across the grids. I find that absolutely fantastic. It's actually really good for creating the columns as well. So if you have a large project and you need to place the primary members, be it the columns and the beams, always use on grids where possible because it just speeds up the process. Now, it leaves this dialogue open. It doesn't automatically finish that dialogue. So you press finish. And as you can see, your beam stop start relative to your concrete columns. But the actual full width is between your grid intersections. So the full width of that beam is 6,000. And when you look at the actual cut length, you can see that it's 5674.6. And that's because it is accounting for the column that it's building, it's, it's connecting into. All right, so it allows for the, the, the width of the column as well. So now that we've brought these in, I'm gonna to go to the 3D view. And as you can see, these are, these are quite um, small, T-beam sections. Realistically, something like this, you would have at a higher level than what we've shown now. So I'm going to select one. I'm going to select all instances, the entire project, and I'm just going to bring that up 1500. Or the top and the end offsets. Just to represent an interim floor or something like that. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to actually change the parameters that we created in the family and show that how, how easily it is to flex these parameters once they've been created properly within the extrusion in the family itself. So we can go into edit type here and what is good practice in all these instances when you are changing parameters of a beam, if you don't know that you are changing every instance of the parameter across the project, if you're working in view specific, you need to have the control enough and the understanding enough of what is happening in the project before you freely edit these type of dimensions okay because what you could do is you could have inverted t-beams placed elsewhere in the project that you're unaware of be working in an isolated view and then change these parameters and end up changing the type elsewhere in the project where they didn't need to change so a good practice is to duplicate and in this instance i'm going to say inverted t-beam b and press ok i want you to watch in the background here as i edit the beam depth with notch depth and the notch width so I'm going to tell it that I want the beam depth to be 750. I want the beam width to be 350. I want the notch depth to be 150 and the notch width to be 75. I want you to look at the background and see what happens when I press OK. As you can see, the entire beam itself is flexed as I've dictated it to. Let me go back to our level zero. I'm going to I'm actually after overextending relative to the concrete size there, but uh, however, never we'll, we'll ignore that for the moment. I'm going to use a section tool. I'm just going to draw a section through the beam. And when you go to the section, change the section to find view, and you can see our beam here. And just to check the validity of the dimensions, we had 750, 350, 150, and 75 respectively. And when I dimension this out, I'm going to change the scale of that to 120 you will see that our parameters are correctly represented. So in essence, that is as easy as it gets for creating something like 
a unique concrete beam um, that you wouldn't necessarily have in your standard template or your standard libraries. This obviously gets more complicated. There's nuances to this. Um, if you're changing something like a steel member or you have a steel profile that is generated from a manufacturer that is standardized, you don't necessarily need to build in all of these parameters. You can essentially just tell at the center point for the origin, the top and the bottom on your reference planes and then draft your profile to match the manufacturer and it's that simple. I've also used beams, um, beam profiles before for something like baffle ceilings or timber slat ceilings or aluminium slatted ceilings where you might have a unique profile that doesn't need the flexibility that something like this would need in the project. All you need is to do is match the manufacturing profile, in which case all you do is draft the profile that relative to the, the origin and Bob's your uncle. So that's a very quick example of how you can create unique beams within the Revit environment by manipulating the existing standard family. If you have any questions on this at all, please let me know. I am developing a blog uh, post for this as well that will go into greater depth detail where we might explore different family variations just so you get a greater remit of um, scope for this. If you have any questions or comments as always, please let me know. And as ever, like and comment and subscribe for the video. Thanks a million. This is Niall Kelly here and you've been watching the 8020 BIM channel. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.